hello, hello. Welcome to our Wednesday evening service. We're so grateful that you joined us here in person, those of you who could, and on Zoom and Facebook, welcome. And we're going to start with our evening meditation. So just center yourself. Take a breath in. Exhale. And just focus on God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God and I are one. Whatever works for your heart, just center right there as we focus on our inner guide.
then gently bring your attention back to this space. How beautiful it is to dive deep into God is the love that I am. So welcome everyone, welcome again. Welcome to you out on Facebook and Zoom. We're so grateful that you're here with us right now. And um, we're going to begin with our opening chant, I believe. Right? Am I right, Sam? Let's am I right? Do it. I'm right. And I'm right. Led by Margaret Owen. Margaret! God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this holy place. God is in this place. Love. Love is. Thank you, Margaret and Sam. Thank you, thank you. I often wake up to that. I wake up in the morning, it's going, my head's going, God is in this planet. So I, so I love Wednesday nights, because Thursday I'll wake up going. <laughs> All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Just taking a breath right here. That holy breath of God, right where we are, God is infinite, eternal, always flowing, right within our heart, mind, and soul is that creator that loved itself so much, it thought up each and every one of us. So what I know to be true is that right here and right now, we are open to receive the word, that we are allowing our mind and our heart to just say, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. And we bless our beloved Reverend Sydney, where she is, even as I speak this word, she is saying, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. And whatever might be planned right now, she is surrendering herself to her high holy self. And we receive a word of joy, of love, of love light of harmony of goodness that lifts and transforms and heals us even as I speak this word that's the nature of God that is the nature of the service we are truly blessed and we go forth as the blessing so right here and right now I release this word into the law of mind where it is made manifest and so it is together we say amen mm. so the Lord's Prayer, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let me be the hand to guide you. I'm the gentle voice inside you, not the one that hounds or blames you, not the one that haunts and shames you. I will show you a brighter day. I will promise a light away for you Deserve to feel safe And you deserve to feel loved And I do love you so So go on and spread 
Shine, shine. Yeah, baby. Thank you so much. You know, there's a joke about this man who is in his kitchen looking for something. And his wife comes in there and he's pulling out drawers and can't find it. And he's opening cupboards and goes, it's not in there, not in there. And he's looking under the stove, under the refrigerator. And she's saying, what on earth are you doing? He said, well, I lost my keys. And she says, well, where were you? when you lost them. Well, I was outside. Well, why aren't you looking for them out there? Well, because the light's better in here. <laughs> Thank you, I'm here six nights a week. So last week, we talked about this season of light that we are in right now. And the whole world is in this place of collectively. I mean, it's not just that there's an archetype about this, which there is, there are, but that we are in this place of moving from dark to light, dark to light. And we metaphorically do that in our own lives as well. You know, Christmas is about the birth of light and the bringing of light. Kwanzaa begins December 26th and will be celebrated by many people of African descent until January 1st. Now, if you don't know anything about Kwanzaa, it's really, really it's so interesting. It's a celebration of light as well. For seven nights, seven candles are lit, each one a symbol of Kwanzaa's seven principles. Unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. I'm all in with that. I am all in with that. And in fact, the word Kwanzaa is derived from the phrase Matunda Ya Kwanzaa, which means first fruits in Swahili. Lighting one's awareness of the seven principles first before entering into the new year is a conscious commitment to live according to the light and guidance and wisdom offered by those principles when one lives to commit and commits to live by those principles. We're also approaching winter solstice, and that is a celebration of the return of light, going from those days that are getting shorter and shorter, and the light seems to be going and going, and yet it's coming back. And last Wednesday and last Sunday, we honored the Jewish tradition Hanukkah by lighting the menorah. So that last celebration of light, Hanukkah, is really ripe with meaning. 
the stories, the stories that the Maccabees were without enough oil. And oil in ancient times, and in those times of what we consider to be the BCE, before the Common Era, was everything to people. It meant life. It meant survival. Oil was used for cooking, medicine, heat, and literally to be able to see. And more significantly to us here today, oil was used for the ritual of anointing. Anointing. When someone or something has been anointed, it means that the thought of love, the intention of love, the energy of love, the knowing of love has been poured over that person or thing, making it holy or a perfect whole. It's transformative. In the legend of John the Baptist, he anointed Jesus. And it was that ritual action of love that raised Jesus to the level of the Christ. Now, I'm sure you all know, or if you don't, you will now, Christ was not Jesus' last name. In fact, he would have been called Jesus ben Joseph, Jesus son of Joseph. The Christ label or the title means the divine presence and infinite life within the human. The divine presence, the infinite life within the human. Within every one of us, we have that Christ presence, that holy, anointed, alive, awake, perfect beingness. Christ abides in each person as her or his innate wholeness and perfection. Jesus the Christ represents the physical embodiment of all divine ideas. Now that's from Charles Fillmore, who co-founded Unity, and his teaching was that we are here to live out these ideas, these metaphysical ideas, these perfect ideas, these wondrous ideas, this, this expression of God, and that when we look at the books of the Bible, when we look at those stories, they're all about us. They're all about us. So we choose to look at them not in a literal sense and not even in a fascination or story sense, but we look at them in a metaphysical sense because every person in the Bible represents us. Every person represents some nature that we have, some nature, some quality of being. It's the greatest psychological textbook ever written. And this summer, I think I'm going to be teaching metaphysical Bible, and I'm hoping that you're going to join me because it's going to be really wonderful. You're going to be looking at and interpreting legends and ideas and stories in the Bible in ways that you probably haven't before. And so it's really fascinating to learn that Everything in there is about you and me and what we go through and what we experience and how we transform in our lives and move from that idea of darkness to light. So you and I have the capacity. We have the capacity to bring that same divine anointment of love into everything in our daily lives. So in the Course of Miracles, one of the fundamental principles is that in any encounter, if we perceive or feel that love is missing, it's because we did not bring it. We did not bring it. I've thought about that idea a lot lately because it lines up with my commitment to take full responsibility for my thoughts and my words. And in Science of Mind, we teach that we are responsible for the thoughts that we think and that those thoughts produce in kind. So it is incumbent upon us to be aware of what we're thinking, how we're thinking, and how we're judging ourselves and judging other people and perceiving any experience at any point. Are we bringing love to it? Or are we thinking that there isn't love there? What are we thinking that a situation is lacking? Of course, in Miracles teaches us it's because we have not brought it. We can't, we can't outsource it and leave it to somebody else to do that work. That's an area of growth that we must own. So that to the degree that we are willing, and notice I said willing, to be loving in any encounter or experience, that same love returns to us multiplied and overflowing. Even in those situations that you don't like, especially in those situations you don't like, any time that you are finding yourself anxious, angry, unhappy, I'll say ticked off. So if you're not bringing the love, it's your responsibility to bring it. And I don't mean fake, owe me, 
spiritual bypass kind of love. I mean, we all have those friends, right, who walk around and they're very, oh, um, they do a lot of oh, um. I call that oh me. And it's not often real. Sometimes it's fake. It's faux. It's faux me. There's a drummer when you need one, right? <laughs> it's faux oh me. But the love that we're talking about here is the kind of love, real love, that's open, it's vulnerable, and it makes us available, available to be present to someone else's pain, to their joy, to their success, their fear, their delight, to their journey. It's called authentic presence. That's the light. That's the truth right there. That's who we are here to be. When we commit to being willing to reveal our divine anointed natures, that Christ that we already are, there's an opening that occurs. That willingness creates an opening. So Leonard Cohen, and by the way, Rumi, the Persian poet in the 13th century, said the same thing. The crack is how the light gets in. For you and me, that crack or that broken open place is our willingness it's our willingness to take full responsibility for the thoughts we bring, for the energy we bring, for the, the opinions we bring, for the beliefs we bring, for the love or the lack of love that we bring. So here's the million dollar question. Are we willing to be wrong about our judgments and decisions about who we were, who we are, in order to reveal the truth and light of who we actually are? Let me read it again. Are we willing to be wrong about who we thought we have been, who we have, we have believed to have been, in order to reveal the truth and light of who we actually are? And then it brings up another question. Are we willing to be wrong about our decisions and judgments of others in order to reveal the truth and light of who, yeah, that's right, who we are? Because our judgments and opinions about other people tells us all about us. It says nothing about them. Some of you might remember many years ago, Terry Cole Whitaker wrote that book, What You Think of Me is None of My Business. It is the healthiest book in the world because it's about me not being concerned that one of you might be looking at me going, oh, look, you know, her pants might be a little long on that one leg. Or, you know, did, did she have time to really floss last night? Who knows? It's none of my business what you're thinking about it. And by the way, it's none of your business what I might be thinking about you. Because the only thing that matters, the only thing, is that anointed knowing of who you are, that you are already the divine. Ernest Holmes wrote, we can be certain that there is an intelligence in the universe to which we may come that will guide and inspire us, a love which overshadows God is real to the one who believes in the Supreme Spirit, real to the soul that senses its unity with the whole. So if you and I are really to live an enlightened life, we must seek to dissolve all of that stuff that has created those pockets of darkness. You know, the darkness is in our own thinking. For many of us, the big pockets of darkness are found in our limited and our fear-based judgments about what's possible because we don't believe that we are possible. If your perspective has been largely fashioned by opinions, by blame and shame, then rest assured that your life is being, a, being created even in this moment, if you haven't really interrogated what's going on in your thinking, your life is being created within a context of opinions, blame, and shame. And all of them are about the past. They're about what has already happened. They're not about this moment, or this moment, or this moment. They're about the past. They're about judgments and assessments of the past. It's a pretty dark way to live. But what we know is that right here and now, we can bring light to our own darkness. To our own darkness by simply beginning to tell the truth, the divine truth about who and what we are. Who and what we are. You know, the, the title of my talk tonight is Looking for Light in All the Right Places. And how often are we looking for it in those places that have nothing to do with our own authority, our own 
responsibility? How often are we looking to find our inspiration, our guidance from a sign out there, a symbol out there? Not that our own intuition does not bring stuff to us and information, because it absolutely does. But here's what I have to tell you, that CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News do not broadcast the divine truth about who and what you are. <laughs> Their stock in trade is fear, right? But the broadcast I want to invite you to listen to is that voice within, which is always broadcasting and always calling. The voice calls us, as Ernest Holmes wrote, to come into the awareness of universal intelligence. It is that presence, that light within each of us to which we may come, to which we become aware. And it will guide and inspire us because it is the love which overshadows. It's bigger than everything, bigger than all of us, bigger than all of our opinions and our judgments and our perception of our failures, our successes. It's bigger than all of that. You know, I think that so much of life feels like and seems like it's about trying to find yourself or find your purpose. You know, who am I supposed to be? Where's my meaning? And we, it's, it's that idea of the search for self in purpose out here that I think we outsource our good. So when we start looking for light in all the wrong places, we are outsourcing our good. We outsource our happiness. We outsource our peace of mind, our security, and our beliefs. You know, it's just so much easier to take on somebody else's beliefs and opinions because clearly they've thought them through, so I'll just co-op them and they can just go right here and, and then I'm good, right? But every time we do that, you know what we also do? We out, outsense our source and our sense of worthiness. We outsource our sense of worthiness. It's an adolescent trait. It's what teenagers do. It's what teenagers do. It's what eighth grade boys do. But we still have it within us, right? And I believe that we are in a place globally where the world is at a place, at least in this country, we are adolescents. We're in that place of being defensive. We're in a place of being insecure. We're, being, we're in a place of trying to grab everything from out here. We're in a place of outsourcing our worthiness. We're outsourcing our worthiness. We're looking for somebody else to make us feel okay. So, let me explain a little bit more. When we believe the ads that say we're too fat, we're too skinny, we're too old, we're young, or in any way not good enough, our insecure teenager gets triggered and says, oh yeah, that must be the problem. That must be it. And we think that there isn't enough and that someone else, also known by the way as the other, is crouched and waiting to take our jobs, our money, our loved ones, our homes, our neighborhoods, and our status. Boy, does that inner teenager get triggered with that idea. Somebody else is going to take mine. It's a belief in not enough. It's a belief that God isn't the source of all life, that God isn't fully abundant, infinitely abundant, and it's a belief that we are not part of that, that we don't live and move and have our being in God, and that God does not live and have its live and move and have its being in us. Those are not the truth of who we are. There's this psychological model called the drama triangle. Has anybody ever heard of that? Okay, I want to tell, tell you about it. It's, it's fascinating because I think most of us live according to that model. So here's what it looks like. On one side of that triangle, you have victim. You have the victim. In other words, that person who lives according to the idea, I have a hair on me. It's just, I keep seeing it peripherally out here. It's like, what am, am I shedding? And so this person lives according to the idea that someone is trying to hurt him or her or take away their well-being, which means their well-being is outsourced. So that they, they're believing that they're going to be subject to somebody else's actions they're going to be a victim. So then we have the second side of the triangle. Because if we have a victim, you gotta have a villain, right? If somebody's gonna hurt you, you gotta have someone who does the hurting. So we have the villain who's lurking in the shadows, just waiting for the chance to take away your stuff or your well-being. So now, when you believe in a victim and villain setup, um, and often we call that villain person, that, that idea, the other, 
because as in the guy who looks different from you and me or comes from another country, when we believe in that, there's a solution that appears on that drama triangle, and that's that third side. It's the hero. It's the hero, and this is where the big outsourcing comes along. So this is how this works. The villain hurts the victim, the victim is afraid, and now the hero steps in to make it all better. And this is how we outsource taking responsibility for our lives and our thinking. It's also how we surrender our power and we block our love, our creativity, and our peace. If any one of us at any time is hoping, wishing, oh God, please, please save me, rescue me, make it not so, make it be different. If at any time we're doing that, we have outsourced our responsibility, our accountability, our authority in our own lives. We have outsourced our well-being. We have outsourced our divine identity. If we think we're going to be transformed by something or someone out there, we're living in the drama triangle. <laughs> Woohoo! party down. Good times, right? Politicians love this model, by the way. Playing upon our deep fears and insecurities by casting some other, the other, as a potential villain in the wings, while all the time supplying the hero who alone can be the one who has the answers and the solution and who can rescue and save us, is how elections are won. It's how cosmetics are sold. It's how diet products are marketed. And it's how you and I are seduced into turning away from our own divine magnificence, our light. But when we look for that same light in all the right places, the drama triangle no longer informs our lives. We're no longer subject to that. We are no longer subject to that. When we look for light in ourselves, the drama triangle no longer limits us. It's as if we have rotated off of it. We are no longer being contextualized by that idea of being victimized or needing to be rescued or saved. When we bring our light to any place, person, or situation where we think it's missing, we become the light itself. We are the anointed and we anoint that situation, we anoint that person, we anoint that relationship simply by the willingness to think about love. How simple could that be? How simple that is and how clear that is, right? You know, at night, the sun doesn't actually go down and set. In fact, it never ever stops shining. It's always, it's always light, it's always light. It's always lighting the sky, but the earth turns away from it. Literally, the earth turns away, rotates away from it, and moves into darkness. So you and I are not bound by anyone else's fears, judgments, beliefs, or limits. We truly are not. You and I are already beings of pure light. You know, in this light that we've been celebrating, you know, we have a few things coming up. We have a candle lighting service. Um, we did the remembrance service that was about lighting a candle. We'll have the burning bowl service on uh, New Year's Eve in which we will burn and really truly release, let go of, burn and dissolve those ideas and things which we are no longer willing to be constricted by. Those, whatever those things are, relationships, stories, stories. You know, if, if the only time you ever went to a New Thought church was during the holidays, you'd think we were all a bunch of pyros, wouldn't you? Because we love to burn sh stuff. We love to burn our stuff. We really do. We have candles everywhere. But it's, the metaphor is really, really good. So I want to invite you to make the decision tonight or re-decide, recommit. Turn within to your own light, your own divine inner light. Look for your own light and then bring it to the world around you. There's another Course in Miracles lesson that reads, there is nothing your holiness cannot do because the power of God lies in it. Isn't that amazing? There is nothing your holiness cannot do 
There's nothing my holiness cannot do. I want you to say that with me. There is nothing my holiness cannot do. Let's do it again. There's nothing my holiness cannot do because the power of God lies within it. So I'm going to close with these words from a friend of mine who's a rabbi. And he wrote, the tallest candle, and this is when he was discussing the menorah. The tallest candle in the menorah is called the Shema. It's right in the middle, and it's the one that lights all the other candles with its light, the Shema. So be the Shema. Go light the world. Be the Shema. Go light your world. Let's pray. Thank you. Oh, how awesome and wonderful and magnificent that we choose right here and now to be the Shema, to engage and to honor and to, to marvel at the light already there, already within us, within every other being in this planet, because all of it is just simply that light of God, which is ever-present, ever-active, ever-expressive, focused and concentrated within each of us individually. How magnificent, how magnificent to know that we are that same light and that we choose now to move from that knowing of our light, that we are one of God, one with God, one as God, one of light, one with light, one as light, and that we choose now to live in that light and we draw toward us all that is necessary to, to remind us who we are. We are open. We are so receptive. We are fully willing because we know that the Spirit is always active and always willing, always receptive, and just waiting for us to remember that there is nothing that our holiness cannot do, that we are already there. So we choose now to step away from stories about limitation. Anything which we have thought was true about ourselves that seemed as if it was a good excuse to not go forward, we release it now. We step off that drama triangle. That is not who we are. We are not victims. We are not villains. We are not heroes. We are God. And that is the truth of each and every one of us in this room. And I know that this expression, this power, this presence has no choice but to fully, fully celebrate itself by means of us and that nothing and no one can stand in the way of that, including us. So if wholeness has appeared to be something that is pulling at your attention, I know that the light is now present and fully active, fully radiating and expressing as complete healing now, wholeness now. If there's been any fear about stepping forward in life, I know that light is active right in that experience and dissolves any sense of darkness. If there has been any, any belief and loss, whatever that loss appears to be, I know that the light now fills that space. I know that love fills that space. And I know that grace fills that space. It is as a healing balm, and it simply wafts over and through each of us. And I say my prayer, I say these words for knowing of light in this world, that everyone everywhere begins to know their own light because this one mind, as we here in this room recognize this, we know that the one mind is touching each and every heart, each and every soul, each and every life, every life on this planet, and that we do indeed have the awareness and the power to anoint by simply bringing our love into our awareness every moment, any moment all moments. So I know that this world is now revealing great wisdom. Any ideas of limitation or ego or stupidity are now gone. We are 
bigger than that because we are God. We are better than that because we are divine. So there is nothing which can stand in the way of our wholeness. And we now know it. We declare it. We live by it. And we let nothing enter our minds or our thinking which contradicts that. We are on guard for our thinking. We protect it. The watchman is at the gate. We only let that into our lives, which is about God, which is about love, which is about peace, which is about wholeness, abundance, joy, and the dance of life. Oh my God, the dance of life. We say yes to the divine choreographer. We say yes to all of that and no that everything we need is already supplied to us, through us, for us, as us. Because right where we are, God is and all is well. I am grateful. I am moved. Oh, I am moved beyond simple knowledge of gratitude into that deep feeling of thanksgiving. That coming down the stairs Christmas morning and seeing the tree all lit up, feeling of gratitude. That feeling of a new puppy in my hands, a kitten in my hands, a baby in my arms. That is the gratitude that we each now choose to embrace, knowing that gratitude doesn't need an object or a focus or any specificity. It just is a feeling that we reveal in every moment. So I invite you to say with me, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Let's say that again. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere because God is here. God is present and nothing but God is active because God is all there is. So I release this word into law, 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 knowing it is done and so it is and together we say amen. to our affirmative giving, shall we? Whether you are here in this room or you're at home in your own rooms, we welcome, we accept, we invite your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings because it is part of how we grow. It's how we share and it's how you get to celebrate the abundance that you already are. So would you join me in saying, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Amen.
coming back. I'm coming back. Here. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Reverend Sydney. That was wonderful. Thank you to our tech staff. We're so appreciative. Oh, want me to take my mask off? You know, I can, they go like this. Take your mask off. You know, in sign language, that means beautiful. So that I like, oh, I want to just go, thank you. Oh, the mask off? I'm just going to say thank you. You already knew you were beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so um, we're talking about tithing. There's many ways you can do that here. Uh, you can make your donation by calling the office, 818-762-7566. Go to nhcrs.org give or you can text the word give to 818-457-3419. And if you've been spiritually fed today, I have. Give what you can, thank you so much. Um, you have prayer with the practitioner. It's available in person right here if you wanna come forward or on Zoom if you're on Facebook, switch over to Zoom and you can do a one minute miracle. Next Wednesday, December 15th, meditation at 6, 50, service at 7 o'clock, and Reverend Sydney's topic will be a clear and present manager. Manger. 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 A clear and present manger. I love that. Clear present manger. manger. <laughs> our youth church is open on Sundays for our 9.45 a.m. service. Youth of all ages are welcome. Bring your children. And we're still doing our 2022 Journey of the Heart pledge forms. They're available out in the foyer. This is how we plan our budget for the year. So we're just asking for a commitment of whatever you might be able to give weekly. Thank you so much for that. Um, Christmas Giving Tree event. Thank you for all who have participated this year. The gift distribution will be tomorrow. And we have our holiday celebration. Oh, this is great. Christmas Carol Sing Along this Friday, 7 p.m., December 10th, with Reverend Sydney and her talented husband, Charlie. He'll be playing the guitar. We'll be doing a sing along, a holiday celebration, wear those horrible, ugly holiday sweaters and show off all the, and join in all the fun. Um, and we'll conclude the evening with hot cider and Christmas cookies on the patio. This Sunday, this is so fun, this Sunday, December 12th in the sanctuary, right after church at 1115, we do our Christmas program for the kids. We have storytelling and a festive event and singing and carols and telling stories. And guess what? Santa's here with Mrs. Claus, okay? So bring the kids. Um, uh, we have our grief support uh, facilitated by our beautiful practitioner, Carol Winokur. It meets this Sunday on Zoom at 1 p.m. And then we have our Christmas Eve candlelight service ceremony Friday, December 24th at 7 p.m. You can be in person or on Zoom or Facebook, and it'll be an all-new Christmas Eve service that will include beautiful readings and singings and candle lighting, and child care is available in the youth church, so we look forward to seeing you on Christmas. Christmas Eve. New Year's Eve, we've got the burning bowl service and potluck. Hello, this church really knows how to do potluck, so don't miss that. Friday, December 31st, 7 p.m., we're going to prepare for 2022 by standing in the strength and power of your dreams. Join Reverend Sydney for a guided and sacred ritual of prayer, meditation, journaling. Let's release 2021. Let's embrace 2022 with power and strength and goodness. And childcare is available. So come, come, come join the service and fellowship in a delicious potluck on the patio. Bring your favorite dish. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. So join that, get to you know celebrate and have community with your fellow uh, church members. Uh, Zoom meditation, great way to start your day. Every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. You don't want to miss that. So go to nh nhcrs.org. nhcrs.org. That's where all the information of everything you need. We have such a vital, vibrant community. Come and participate in all the various ways you can grow and expand yourself in our spiritual community. Thank you, and Reverend Sydney will lead us out. Liz Racy, you are a goddess. Thank you so much. I just want to acknowledge a few people in our virtual, I know that I didn't even have to look, and I know Doreen's standing back there doing this. <laughs> Yeah, she just gave me the thumbs up, see? Um, 
In our virtual community, we have Nicoletta Achim holding vigil. She's a practitioner. And we have Dean Regan doing our Facebook Live support. And our Zoom support is Robin Wolford, Diane Satterley, and Reverend Nadine. Um, and yeah, I know. Give them a hand. Yes, yes, yes. And by the way, this is open to anybody to do this. The digital, our virtual community is awesome. It's a digital ministry, and it is by no means limited to little tiny things. It is big. We are reaching people not just in this country, but across the globe. So I really want to invite you to consider being a part of it. It's a really wonderful way to be of service and to open yourself to know more possibility. So in the sanctuary, in the room... Adam has been doing our lights and sound. Thank you very much. <laughs> Colleen Butler and Julie Daniels were our greeters and our ushers. <laughs> our sanctuary media team, Doreen Remo, Nikki Savara, Brenda Jordan, Blair Thompson. <laughs> and our soloist, Margaret Owens. You can go to margaretowens.com. <laughs> Take her home with you. You don't even have to feed her, but you get to listen to her. It's really good. And Sam Krieger, thank you for being our music director and our pianist. Thank you. You know, he's really good, and he's really well-known outside of this, the church world. We go back 30, 35 years or more. We've known each other a long time. And people know him as a badass. He's a badass. He really is. Anyway, pulpit support Liz Racy, and I'm Reverend Sidney Steen. Thank you all who have joined us in person and virtually. Let's pray. All right, so we just take all of this energy knowing that we are the delight of God. We are the dance of God. We are that celebration, and we continue that celebration as we move out into the world. And I know that we bless all who cross our paths, for we simply announce, anoint, and see the light within them. We continue to source our own light. We keep that bucket full of light, knowing that we are God in form. How glorious is that? So we bless this church. We bless all churches, all ashrams, all synagogues, all mosques, all, all, all paths to God. Everywhere where people gather to remember who they are. So it is wonderful that we get to remember that, to celebrate it, and we are so grateful. So I release all of this now knowing that it just continues on. Those ripples continue, they continue, they continue. And man, life is good. And so it is. Amen. Thank you.